ratio, and proportion. Great day, students! Welcome back to my classroom. For today's lesson, you will learn how to define and illustrate the meaning of ratio and proportion using concrete or pictorial models. Let's begin! Let's have our first example. I bought three apples and six mangoes for my milkshake. Now the question is, what is the ratio of apples to mangoes? Hmm, but wait, what is ratio? Well, ratio is a way of comparing two or more quantities. Here, we are asked to get the ratio or compare the quantity or number of apples to mangoes. We have three ways in writing a ratio. The first one is the word form, which is A is to B. Here, we are going to count first the first item, which is the apples. We have three apples. Let's write three. Three is two. The second item is the mango. We have six mangoes. That makes three is two, six. Wonderful. Now for our second way in writing the ratio, we have the column form. Here, instead of writing the word is to, we are going to replace it by the colon symbol. That makes three colon six, but still read as three is to six. Finally, our last way of writing the ratio is the fraction form, where the first quantity serves as the numerator, while the second quantity serves as the denominator, which makes three over six. This means that for every three apples, we have six mangoes. Remember, ratio is a comparison of two or more quantities, but we can only use the fraction form when we are only comparing two quantities. Wonderful! Now, like fraction, ratios can be simplified into Lobby's term as well. Let me give you an example. We have 3 over 6, or 3 is to 6. We can simplify the ratio into Lewis term like how we simplify a fraction, by dividing both quantities by its greatest common factor. Here, the greatest common factor of 3 and 6 is... Very good! 3! Now let's divide 3 by 3 and 6 by 3. That gives us... 1 is to 2. This means that for every 1 apple, we have 2 mangoes. This also means that 3 6 is equivalent to 1 half. Or 3 is to 6 is equivalent to 1 is to 2. This is an example of equivalent ratio. Equivalent ratios are ratios that make the same comparison of numbers. Now, how do we get the equivalent of the ratios? Let me give you an example. I have here two donuts and one drink. It means that the ratio of the drink to donuts is 1 is to 2. We can also write the ratio 1 is to 2 into its fraction form 1 half. Now, to get the equivalent of the ratios, we are just going to simply multiply both quantities by any number. Let's say, for example, let's multiply 1 half by 2. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. This means that 1 half or 1 is to 2 is equivalent to 2 is to 4. Now, let's try to multiply this by 3. We get 3 over 6 
or 3 is to 6. These also means that 1 is to 2 and 2 is to 4 is equivalent to 3 is to 6. Wonderful! Now we can also get the equivalent of a ratio by dividing both quantities by its factor. We know that the factor of 3 and 6 is 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1, while 6 divided by 3 is 2. This means that 3 is to 6 is equivalent to 1 is to 2. Very good. Again, these are what we call equivalent ratios. But this also shows proportion. Do you know what a proportion is? Proportion is a statement of equality between two ratios or fractions. Let me give you an example. 1 is to 3 is equivalent or proportion to 3 is to 9. There are two parts in a proportion. The numbers we find inside are what we call means while the number outside are extremes. We will know if the ratios are proportioned to each other if the product of the means and the extremes are equal. Now let's try. Let's multiply the means. 3 times 3 is 9. Now let's multiply the extremes. 9 times 1 is 9. Here we can see that their product are both 9. This means that they are proportion. Let's have another example. I have here proportion 1 is to 2 equals 3 is to 4. Now let's see if they are proportion to each other. Let's multiply the means. 3 times 2 is 6. Now let's multiply the extremes. 1 times 4 is 4. Now are they equal? No. 6 and 4 are not equal to each other. This means that the ratio 1 is to 2 and 3 is to 4 are not proportion to each other. Now let's have another example. Let's try to find out if these fraction forms are equivalent or proportion to each other. To determine if they are proportion, let's use the cross multiplication method. 6 times 1 is 6, while 2 times 3 is 6. Since the products are both 6, that means they are proportion to each other. Let's have one more example. How about these ratios in fraction forms? 1 is to 2 equals 3 is to 4. Let's use the cross multiplication method. 4 times 1 is 4, while 2 times 3 is 6. Since the products are not the same, and 4 is not equal to 6, this means that these two ratios are not proportioned to each other. Great job! Now, if in a given proportion, a term is missing, it can be solved using cross-multiplication. Let me show you an example. Let's say a baker can bake a cake using two cups of flour. This gives us the ratio of the cup of flour to the cake, which is 2, is to 1, or 2 over 1. Now the baker needs to make three cakes. The question is, how many cup of flour does the baker need to make three round cakes? The first thing that we need to know are the quantities given. We have the number of cups of flour, which is two, and the number of cake that we can make, which is one. We know that for every two cups of flour, we can make one cake. Now let's set up a proportion. The problem is, 
What if we make three cakes? How many cups of flour should we have? Since we do not know yet, let's write N. Now to find a missing term which is N, let's use the cross multiplication. 3 times 2 is 6. While 1 times N is 1N, but we are only going to write 1. The next step is to divide the products. 6 divided by 1 is 6. Great job! This means that we need 6 cups of flour to make 3 brown cakes. Wonderful! Let's have another example. Let's say we have this proportion. Let's find the missing term. Again, we will use cross multiplication method. 12 times 1 is 12. N times 4 is 4. N. let's only write 4. Now let's divide the products. 12 divided by 4 is... You are right! It's 3! Therefore, the missing term or N is equals 3. Good job! Now let's try this one. How are we going to find the missing term N? We are going to multiply the means and the extremes. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times N is 9N. But let's only write 9. Now let's divide the products. 9 Divided by 9 is 1. Therefore, n equals 1. Wonderful! Great job, students! Now, here are the things that you learned today.